Bond market means business. It took a pretty big drop in stocks to put a bid into treasuries. Joining me, Colin Martin is director and fixed income strategist at Schwab's Center for Financial Research. Perfect man for the occasion here. Colin, more follow through from last week. So walk me through kind of what you're watching here. Are you surprised by the intensity or does this generally line up the selling in bonds with the data we're getting? I'd say it does line up. But where we are today, we're looking at the numbers or every economic release very closely, not just us, but but all market participants, of course. And all questions are leading towards, is inflation uh, going to continue to be sticky and what's driving that? So when you look at the action following today's retail sales report, you really can't be surprised. There's a very strong report across the board. Uh, we saw upward revisions uh, to February's numbers. And the thing that we uh, looked at most closely and what really stuck out to us was that month over month change in the retail sales controls group. That's what feeds directly into GDP and it was up 1.1% uh, for the month alone. Now these numbers are nominal and inflation eats into that a little bit to make to look at the real numbers, but they're still strong regardless any way you slice it, even when accounting for uh, inflation. So when we see numbers like this, it supports the case that inflation could be stickier. It supports the case that the economy is proving much more resilient than we would have expected. And specifically, consumers continue to drive the economy. And as long as we see these consumer spending numbers and retail sales numbers stay elevated, it kind of throws a wrench in the plan of the timing and magnitude of those rate cuts. Okay. So if we do keep dropping these odds, where does that shift our possible trading ranges in the bond market? If we're going to zero cuts this year, Colin, I mean, well, firstly, I guess, is that where we're going if rates keep blowing out? Is that what they're telling us? Uh, that's what they're telling us. We're not there yet, Oliver. We're still in the camp for two. Okay. Uh, we got uh, comments from New York Fed President John Williams today, who, who still suggested that he thought that, that rate cuts were likely this year, uh, but he acknowledged that inflation's high. That, that's what we're paying attention to. If inflation does stay high, or if the data we're seeing, like you just alluded to, uh, continues to come in hot, then, then that would likely push back uh, the, the timing and, and, and the magnitude of rate cuts, because the, the unanswered question is, well, what's the rate that's really going to slow this economy down and slow down consumer spending habits? Because like I just mentioned, that's really the key driver right now. If we are seeing these uh, stronger than expected numbers, it, it's showing us that consumer, household, individual spending habits haven't really changed that much. And it could result in the Fed kind of second guessing or rethinking what their approach is going to be. We're not in the camp yet for rate hikes, uh, but as we see these stronger numbers, we'll have to adjust our, our outlook accordingly. So far, we've kind of taken one of the cuts off the table. Uh, if things remain stronger than possible, uh, stronger than we expected rather, then we probably would be closer to one or zero rate cuts, but that's not our base case just yet. Did you expect that retail sales to be such a hitter? I mean, uh, really shook the bond market today. It seems like we're getting more sensitive print to print at this point, am I wrong? Well, we are, because I, I think the idea that the, these number of rate cuts are being taken off the table so quickly, and it's not even that the economy is proving resilient right now, it's actually just strong. And I think that's what's likely a concern for bond market participants. And if we look at, say, the neutral rate, or what's the level of restriction that the economy needs to slow things down, uh, you could argue that right now, in the short run, in the here and now, things aren't very restrictive because it, our spending habits haven't really changed that much. I think a lot of it comes down uh, to, to the makeup of where borrowing has occurred, right? If you look at individuals, so many people have locked in those low interest rates. So the longer the Fed keeps the rate at this peak, it doesn't matter that much for a lot of households because the their borrowing is at the margin that's affected by these higher rates, not the bulk of their borrowing. And we're seeing that at the corporate level too. A lot of companies were able to borrow in 2020 and 2021 at record low yields, and they successfully termed out that debt. Now, the risk, of course, is the longer the Fed holds at its peak, uh, the, the, the less these companies can push off refinancing their debt, because at some point, especially mm. with high yield companies, we'll start to see that debt come due. That's really where we think the pain could come from. If companies start feeling the pain more than households, then you start to see more layoffs, uh, a more difficult hiring situation. And that's how you see it trickle down into the, uh, the household data. Okay, so we're not uh, exposing big cracks in credit yet, but we'll maybe probing a little bit here uh, for sure as rates keep moving. Uh, Colin, tomorrow, Jerome Powell, the language we've heard from the Fed, 
Uh, do we have kind of any insight on maybe how any of the recent language from uh, his peers might inform what we hear from the Fed chair next? I would expect to hear similar comments from Powell. Most officials have pretty much pretty much been reading from from the same script over the past few weeks. The idea that data is a lot stronger than expected and that can push back the timing and number of those rate cuts. The, the Fed's being pretty transparent about that. And when we hear about the idea of the Fed wanting to cut rates, I think they want to cut rates if they got the job done. But they're seeing in the data, they're seeing the same data we're seeing, that the job isn't done yet. So I think Powell will, will kind of mimic those comments, acknowledge that inflation is still too high. Uh, he'll acknowledge that other things are still too strong, whether it's retail sales, the overall economy, uh, strong labor market, because we've seen non-farm payrolls pick up a little bit. I think Powell will kind of have the same theme there, that if inflation proves stickier than, than uh, they expected, then those rate cuts will probably be pushed back, and as well as the number. All right. Colin, thanks for the update, and we'll be watching for any changes to the framework uh, from your team. Thank you very much.